Hello and welcome, Pocket Watch here, and it's about time for another episode of Umineko. So, I did it again. I did it again and started recording without recording my screen. So, yeah. That's fact. Anyway, let's just go to the episode because. Stop. Yep. Yeah, and that's where I was surprised when I did it the first time without screen. <laughs> because I thought like I ended this episode in this place because I thought there would be like a long talk between Beatrice and Butter and apparently I was wrong. So anyway, there were five humans in the kitchen, but it was very quiet, filled only with the sound of the rain. It was only accented by the sound of Shannon and Kumasawa washing the dishes. Also, I've been only 10 minutes in, it will be faster probably now, so don't worry about that. Gouda was using the leftovers from breakfast and lunch as uh, ingredients for the soup. Rosa had suspected that poison might be added to the food, so they decided to eat canned food, but it hadn't been too satisfying. But Gota thought she was being too cautious, so he was spontaneously creating a soup to be served only to those who wanted some. Sean and Kumaseva were washing the dishes that the food had been arranged on. On the inside, they thought maybe Gota should wash them, since he would be the one who wanted food arranged in the place in the first place. But I left the complaints unsaid for the time being. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to like ask you, because I don't think I never ever asked you or you never answered me or I don't remember. Uh, do you like Goda? I mean, I don't like him. It's like, at first he was fine and then progressively in the story he got just worse and worse he's just being a jerk to everyone around he's just like getting okay if you like his food basically and everything uh, i feel like he he's he's like my least favorite character in the umineko so far what do you think let's go Genji and Nanjo were facing each other across a crude chess, chess set that had many years of experience. The game had still only just begun, and because of the opening game, of these experienced players had been all honed to perfection. It looked like a ceremony where they just moved specified pieces in specified order. <laughs> Kaihushashokuzai Generally good was Promise Neverland. Neverland. Yeah, Promise Neverland did it really good. Because usually when you see it like in the movies or stuff, it's like poison working instantly. Basically, you eat it and you just like, I don't know, choke to death in like seconds or minute or something like that. And it's not realistic. And in Promised Neverland, they just basically ate some food and waited for like hour to see if ha something happened. And that's actually a good way to wait at least one hour for poison to actually trying to work. And yeah, I wonder how they will test it. If they will just eat something and just uh, say, hey, it's... It's okay, you can eat it, that's fine. Yeah. No, I think like 
Especially if the servants go and give the Zook to uh, Ushiremiya family. And they are already su suspecting them. So, like Goda said, he can like eat it and then they should wait. Wait for like one hour or two hours and see if anything happened to him. If not, it should be safe. Should be safe. Because, yeah, Poison can still like walk after several hours. So, it's not 100%, but it's still safer than just eat and wait one minute or something. Anyway, let's go. ゴダさんのまかない料理は本当に美味しいです。美味しい材料を買ってきて、美味しい料理が作れるのは当たり前です。私は師匠にありわせのもので美味しく作るまかない料理を極めてこそ真の料理人だと習いました。それはいい師
They couldn't imagine that Kinzo, who never left his study, would dash out in the middle of the stifle and come to the back of the house, where only low-class people ever entered or exited. Okay, that's kind of terrifying now. <laughs> Shannon and Kumasawa drew close together, fearfully looking at the back door. As Goda fearfully approached the back door, he called out. And his eye flashed towards the butcher knife that sat in the nearby sink. He didn't pick it up yet, because there was still possibility that this was a member of the family. However, that possibility was impossible. There was no response from across the door to go the initial question. Maybe his voice has been so quiet that it hadn't reached through all the wind and rain outside. Genji -san. Yeah. That's kinda bad. Genji took a knife with a classical design from a stationary box placed near the chest set. It was something to be used uh, instead of paper knife to open envelopes for statements of delivery and bills. But it was still a knife. Yep, weapon's weapon. So the blade on it could injure someone. Genji hid it in his sleeve with a well predicted practice practice motion. Oh well practice motion. Interesting He's used to it? Ah I don't know, I'm always fixed on little details like that. Then he approached the back door himself, giving Goda a silent note. Goda continuously approached the back door and slowly started to open it. What will they, what will they do if they see Beatrice? Wait, they they gave him like full name here. Why? This is weird. They just called him Do Goda before, right? Or I just... I'm just like being paranoid. The shadow of a person suddenly shuffled in the side, landed on its knees and fell over. Okay... Goda fell backwards onto his backside and couldn't get up. That human shadow was soaked with rain, smelled with mud, and drenched with blood. What the hell? Um, what? Excuse me, what? We know that Cannon is dead. Like, in fact, he was killed. It was Cannon. His breath was feeble, and the puddles of mud he left were quickly drenched to bright red. What the fuck? But that means that he's main suspect again. But how? When Nanjo held him and turned him face up, there was a deep, gruesome wound right in the center of his chest, as though he had been stabbed there by a spear or something. Wait, so... Wait, what? So he somehow survived? What? Even now, deep red blood poured out from there. But he died in the room! 
Okay, I did not expect that. Like, what? I'm confused. But we had so much confirmation that he died, and and we even saw like his ghost with Jessica. I mean, they didn't, but we did. It's again, it's again some mindset that I cannot really do when I'm talking about theories. I mean. Characters in game have different perspective than I, than the reader. Because in my mind, Canon is dead. We have a lot of confirmation about his death. They don't have that. And Canon is somehow alive. I... I... I don't know. It's, it's going to be some kind of like... Illusion or something, I don't know. What? What? Yeah, because he will be like main suspect again. <laughs> he had told them not to tell Rosa right after appearing in the state. This could only mean something very disquieting. An eerie anxiety rose to their faces. I feel like this is some kind of trick made out of Beatrice. I don't know how to explain that by human rights. But that could be like illusion made by magic or something and he would try to blame Rosa I guess for killing them both. But as we could see, Rosa gave a proof with her gun to Ushiromiya's. So eh, I don't know. I mean, this can divide them even more. But still, random claim against them alone? No, actually... Maybe. That, that actually might be a good... Against Rosa with a gun. That might have more value. It's like... A word of dying person. You know? I feel like it gives more value. And what... Also, why they didn't show us a cannon yet, if it's him, I wonder. Normally we would see his sprite or some kind of scene. Kano once was unbelievably deep, and judging from Nanjo Pale Files, it was a miracle that he was still conscious. <laughs> What the hell is going on? No matter how much Nanja tried to wipe off that gushing deep red blood, he couldn't do it. He, he couldn't do it. He couldn't wipe it all away. And each time, the wound was aggravated, causing Kanon to cry in anguish. Kanon-kun! 
Can you see that? I mean, yeah. What was that sound? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? It 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 sounded like cracking bones or something. I knew it. I knew it. It's some kind of some kind of fucked up joke from Beatrice. He's going to blame Rosa. That's fucked up. It still don't give us answer why the door was locked though. Also, Rosa was with you all the time, right, Kenji? In the chapel. So... Like... I mean, Genji was with Kinzo, but... Rosa with the rest of the people. There's a lot of conflict here. Also, she didn't... Yeah, she didn't have the... Weapon, but maybe... She could have some kind of spear or something, I guess. That is... Ah, uh, it's stretched. Disregarding Nanja and Kumasawa, who are struggling hard and stained with blood as they try to stop bleeding, Genji and Gouda face each other. Because, it, because if what Kano said was the truth, Rosa was a culprit who killed Jessica. Khan screamed even more hatefully. His hate filled voice made it seem like he was seeing Jessica being harmed right before his eyes. What kind of reason? What the fuck, Golda? Seriously? Are you seriously going to fucking go with this? You know how she could like kill every single Shiromiya family right now with the shotgun then? I mean, you now with the Winchester? だとしたら、バトラ<笑> Shannon suddenly rode out in the, into the corridor. Her expression was complex and tragic, as though she didn't know what to believe. Shannon ran. To where? The inside of the mansion had been scru scrupulously cleaned, so it probably wouldn't be easy to find. She might find it if she searched the Rose Garden, but they would probably be all been lost in this wind and rain. That's right. The boiler room isn't cleaned very often. If she went there, she might be able to find it. What? Shannon ran downstairs to find that in the underground boiler room. What? Did some medicine take effect at the brink of death? Or was Cannon fully beyond feeling pain? The time being at this kind of painful gasping has subsided. 
Nanja apparently didn't view this as a very good sign, and he didn't let his eyes of Kan for a second. Kumasawa firmly gripped Kan's hand and kept encouraging him, so that the willpower keeping him alive didn't fade away. Genji Ugoda seems uncertain how to respond to the truth Kan had risked his life to deliver. Yeah. That's true. この島には医者はいてもくすりはなく病院打たれどころが悪ければ死ぬぞ。やっ、プティマッチ。それは分かっていますが。それより早く行動を起こさないと、ま、私たちは老座様にうまく追い出された気がします。今頃 I'm getting annoyed by this whole situation. God damn it. It's only 25 minutes in. こちらから仕掛ける<笑> It's not canon. Canon who would thought who they would thought was sleeping quietly suddenly started to talking brightly. Almost as though he would been awake this whole time and suddenly opened his mouth. Kan looked firm and steady, which relieved Nanjo a bit, but considering the depth of the wound, he couldn't wipe away a certain creepy feeling. He knew because he was a doctor. After having this so much blood, Kao might easily have lost consciousness. And yet, somehow he was still instantly aware of his surroundings. Yeah, that's not normal. Was it Yov? Or was it tenacity? Sometimes the power of human life surpassed common knowledge. While stepping while stopping the bleeding, Nanjo had groped around a bit inside the bleeding hole with tweezers, making sure there were no foreign objects inside the affected area. The great depth on the wound had shocked him. It had certainly reached as far as his lungs, and yet, and yet, no, but the fact that his still life is wonderful. But Kano had spoken clearly, who helpfully stated that one named Rosa made this wound. Cursing and raging over and over. Um, it's not canon. These eyes, why they red? Excuse me? Can batteries like... I don't... Re no, wait, it's not like a revive. Kano is dead, we saw like his ghost. I'm talking as a viewer perspective now. So, who is this? Or rather, what is this? It might be some kind of summon that Beatrice have. Maybe it can like transform to have other shapes or something. Of course, they don't know about this, but we can assume it as the viewers. It might be a summon of Beatrice. 
Ha! Huh. This is pretty freaking bad. I don't like it. Mm. Yeah, right. So, Nante Hitoda, Genisa, Dosumasho, what I start in Monica Bukiga Irunotewa. New York, you were singular, Rosa, some of us, no, you know. Yeah, Genisa, Singer, Singina, Jana. Come on. Just look at him. Just look at him. Like, what the hell? And these are like empty eyes. Again, did you hear that? Maybe it's... No. Yeah, we won't believe you. Like, you are... You should be dead. Even with that wound, it's like not normal. Khan sat up on the bed, speaking to Genji. Kodan seems to be willing to believe Khan's story. He even sat up with this wound, like... Just to realize that something wrong with this. This is not normal. To be honest, if someone like that just... If I would be there, I I also wouldn't know like what to do. You can see a person, but... I mean... At least someone should see that his eyes are different, right? Maybe they could think like he's imposter or something, at least. If you not think that the whole... Being basically dead is, you know, I don't know. Yeah, okay. How I was killed first. Yeah, like what the fuck? Ah, Kore this Kataisa Kizajarima. Yep, sure, it's nothing. Uh, you have basically destroyed lungs and a hole in your chest. I would not buy it. There's a lot of freaking strange things happened at this point of story, even if it was like a real thing that would happen to me. I would say like that's not normal. You're not You're not behaving normal. I can't believe you like you are You should not be alive. How you're alive? These are the questions I want to know. Yeah. Are the Sevens basically dead now? Is it really going to happen? Is he going to kill everyone? Escalon said that he began to untie the bandages that had been painstakingly wrapped. The gruesome hole in his chest was immediately exposed. What the hell? Okay, okay, let's, let's, um... Uh, let's go. Khan shot off his grappling wound, which was still slowly spilling out foamy blood. Everyone averted their eyes reflexively. What is he doing? Why I feel here like broken bones? What the hell is he like? Oh my god. It's like he's like trying to open it or something and the bones just cracking. What the hell? Mm, I don't want to hear that. 
Count held up two fingers, showed them to everyone, and slowly started to stick them into the gruesome wound, routing the center of his chest. Plunging, slimy, squishy, wet. The fingers went in deep, all the way to their bases. What the fuck is going on? You better guys, run. You better run. Those fingers were sticking all the way into his chest, up to their bases. And then he slowly pulled them out in exactly the same way. The fingers he pulled out were stained a sticky, solid, deep red color. And there was even a thread hanging. The fingers were covered after the bases in deep red. Yeah. So wait, um, uh, one more thing. One thing. Um, one, two, three, four, five. I think we have five deaths. Ah, uh, okay. So this will survive. Actually, I was thinking that the church will die, but apparently not. <laughs> That's creepy! I'm sorry for headphone scissors. That was creepy laugh. It was like mix of can voice and some of female voice, but not by Beatrice. At that moment, the door was slammed open and Shannon appeared. Oh, yeah, Shannon went to boiler room for something. Even after she saw Cannon stained with fresh blood, her impregnable expression didn't flutter. What the hell? Did you know something? Oh yeah, she's not like... She's not even surprised. So she realized what's going on. I. She might have been trained like Cannon or something, you know, to have like that weird plate or something. But she was never that good as Cannon, maybe. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, that's a very good question. Thank you. It was only so natural. Everyone believed he was canon. So they couldn't understand the meaning of Shannon's question. When they looked, they noticed that Shannon was holding a handkerchief in her hand. It was filthy and looked like it had been used to wipe up some trash or dust. And while holding that, she approached canon, drawing closer to his feet. Nanda. Uh, what? Why you are so what? Why is this so surprised? Is this some kind of info that I missed or I don't remember? If spiders are your natural enemy. I'm being confused. Guys, this episode is basically blowing my mind right now. What am I missing? Is it something I should know? I hear something in the in the background. That was a purple blade. 
It was sh Cannon. When Shannon brought that handkerchief close to Cannon to hide, something happened in an instant. It happened all at once. The human eye couldn't have followed it. Cannon jumped like a wild goat, fleeing from the thing Shannon was holding. Then from his arm, some kind of afterglow flashed purple and drew a curve through the space. That arc, which drew three beautiful purple curves, traced across the throats of Nanjo and Kumasawa, who's been tending to him. Well, shit. Well, two of what I thought are dead. An instant, Nanjo and Kumasawa's throats opened like gaping mouths, and the blood really started spilling out. The third purple curve should, be, should have traced across Chan's throat. But Shan wasn't there. Because Genji, who had been behind her, wrapped his own arm around Shan's neck and pulled her back. This all happened in an instant. <coughs> in the instant, I took Goda to think fast in an attempt to understand the scene. The frozen moment in time shattered. Blood was gushing from Nanj and Kumasawa torn open necks. Khan jumped and kicked off the picture frame that had been hanging from the wall behind him, springing forward just like cut and aiming for Shannon's throat again. But Khan's target once again disappeared from in front of him, because Genji had pulled Shannon again, and the two of them had fallen to the ground in the defensive crouch. <laughs> <laughs> Even Goda was no fool. Even he couldn't fully understand what's going on. He at least realized that if this cannon wasn't safe, his own life would also be in peril. He sprung at cannon with his huge body, pushing him up against the wall with all his weight and physical strength. Under the purple curve was drawn from the tips of fingers on Kaun's right hand. When he raised that hand like a sword aiming for the gold back, there was a low tongue. Because Kaun raised his hand, he had been pinned to the wall. He couldn't tear his palm away from the wall. Sticking out from it was the ge knife Genji had thrown. Holy shit! Under normal circumstances, it would have been surprising to see someone as old as Genji handle a knife so skillfully. But in this abnormal space, no one paid much mind. Genji, <laughs> Genji took the handkerchief with the spider web struck to it from the shannon, and he approached Cannon, who was pinned to the wall by Goda, massive body and a knife. <laughs> What do you mean? What the hell? When Genji pushed the handkerchief up against Cannon face, there was sound just like setting meat on a red-hot iron plate. Of course, the smell was the same too. It was horribly burned, fastening in filthy red and black, and crying out in his death throats. Cannon body burst open and scattered. It was almost as though a balloon filled with gold leaf had popped. The entire servant room was completely buried under the storm of golden leaf, no, a crowd of gold butterflies. So, did I somehow miss the information that Beatrice's weak point are spiders or something like that? Did I forgot about it or is this the first time we see that? Let me know in the comment if I just forgot about it or this is actually the first 
time we got this information. These butterflies began to softly fade, as though into water, or rather into the empty air itself. And afterwards, afterwards, all that was left was the three survivors sitting on their butts, stained with blood. Um, yeah, I don't remember that being the case that Beatrice would be afraid of spiders or anything. I don't remember that. Maybe Shannon will explain that. Maybe it was something that happened like behind the scenes, you know, that we don't know yet. However, not everyone was merely stained with blood. Some of them were lying on the ground, spurring blood out of themselves. Slits so sharp, they looked like they would cut your finger if you touched them open wide and a large amount of blood kept pouring out. Fuck. Also, the three of them now are bigger suspects, because three of them survived, two are dead, and Rosa and the rest can assume that they are culprits now, because there is no one else, like Canon is not existing. They don't have proof that someone else did that. どうだ。怪我はないか。私は大丈夫です。しかし何があったんです。私はあれを確かにこの手でその私が何があったのか理解できない。いや、ですビヨンドヒューマンコンプレヘンシブルアイガス。ゴーダルクエッドヒズオン the bright red blood left from his scarf with Ganon definitely remained. And yet, Ganon was nowhere to be seen, because he had disappeared. He had transformed into golden butterflies and scattered. Goda kept screaming alone, without a clue about what was going on. Shannon sobbed in front of Nanja at Kumasa remains. Also, we got an update. Okay, two are down. Died in the servant room, his throat slice opened by a sharp blade or something similar. However, this alone isn't enough. What do you mean? Died in the servant room, so uh, sharp blade similar. The things she touches are yet to come. Oh. Head and kill. Okay, no. Uh... Yeah, head and chest. So basically, that's not enough to just kill them. They need to be injured in the specific places. So they still need to have like in the head and in the stomach, in the chest. Right? Because Canon and Jessica counts as the second Twilight. They still need to be like head and chest injury. As Genji watched over her, silent as always. Oh wow, that... Once again, the clock really want me to see it. It's like 15 minutes, right? Because it was like first o'clock. Is the big clock determining like the end of the episode basically? Last time I think the big clock showed up at like the end. Might be. Yeah. Also I think this is a good place to end. Because we may have a lot of talking going on and assumptions. Maybe we'll get Beatrice and Canon and Butter talking again to each other. And I think this is a very good place to end. Maybe I finally found a place where I can actually end the episode. 
Because last episodes were like really hard to end. Oh my god. I just... What have we seen? And, th and this is going to be complicated as fuck. The three of them just get like suspicious getting priced up around them. Just like that. Because three people can kill two people easily. They have like more po manpower in this. So yeah. This is bad. I don't know how it will end. But I still... So my predictions are still the same. Nanja Kumasawa. I predicted that. So that's okay. My other prediction is... George will die. I think like George is 100% dead in this episode. I think he's dead. If he survives, and I would be surprised, really. And I'm and I'm basing this only because of what Channel said at the beginning. That's my only basis for this. Maybe she just meant, you know, the canon. Like Canon's death because he was also close to her. And that massacre that this thing in uh, Canon appearance did today. But I still think that most likely she mentioned it about George. I think that he could die. So we still need two more people. I don't really know. Kenji got pretty surprisingly important right now. We don't see Kinzo much. I feel like maybe... I don't know. I, I don't know why I cannot provide an example of why I think like that. But I feel like Kinzo will survive. So my other bet will be Genji and Goda being dead. So these are my three places. Kinzo might die? But I'm not entirely sure. I think that he will survive though. I don't want to kill Genji yet as well. I think out of these three, uh, Genji have the lowest chance of dying. Yeah, I think for me, George is 100% dead. Goda is probably like 80%. Genji? I would say it's a flip coin 50-50. And if not Genji, it had to be Kinzo. I don't think Rosa will die. And Maria will not die. Like, obviously. Butler is the main character. He has plot armor. And Shannon... Well, talked to us in the beginning. Like she knew the future, so... She's alive in the future. So yeah. That, that are my guesses. And yeah. Thank you for watching the episode. And I will see you in the next one. So for now Pocket Watch is going out.